All right, there it is. Um, you see we've got our clutch cone, our forward gear, needle bearing, thrust washer, bearing. All right, let's put this thing back together. So the first thing is this is the forward gear. So usually you take this collar off right here, and that, that's how the cone would come off, but I'm not gonna do that extra step just to do it so so I got the collar back on that would get pounded back on not hard but tap back on then a the needle bearing then the reverse gear we're doing the reverse side first so then the reverse gear goes in there we go okay then this washer this thick I don't know if this is the thrust washer but this has a little bit of a lip on it. I don't know if you can see the lip here. Uh, this lip goes on the side that the bearing goes, so it goes away from the, the gear here. Okay. Now, we've got this washer that has the groove in it, this bearing, and this pin. It's a little counterintuitive, but it only works this way. You've got to put the pin in first, then the bearing, goes over the pin. Just make sure I'm doing this right. It's good to have an extra blow up view of it. On first and the collar goes on. So I'll put the bearing in. I'll use my special tool here and then a hammer to kind of tap it on. It's going, yep. It makes a lot of noise but I'm not really hitting it that hard. You gotta make sure you hit it straight too. Okay, this needs to go on just a little further though. We're getting there. There. Now we got this so the pin can move back and forth. Now it would seem like you would put the bearing on first, then the pin, but once the bearing is on, bearing is on there's no way this pin will fit in the bearing. Likewise, there's no way the pin comes out. So now the collar goes so now the spinning won't affect the nut so the next thing then is the nut this is the new one I'm reverse thread so we're gonna turn them left <laughs> we're gonna turn left to tighten this there we go and I, I'm thinking that when I torque this nut down that'll squeeze this all together, okay? All right, so let's go over to the vise and torque the nut. Torquing the nut. Uh, the book says I should torque this to between 60 and 80 foot-pounds of torque. And now remember, left-hand thread, so we turn it left to tighten it. I got my old trusty torque wrench here. So, we'll go for 80 foot-pounds. Okay, there's 40. 60, almost 80, there, 80 foot pounds. Okay, the next step is to lock this nut on, so I've got a nice drift here that should not slide hopefully, so we'll just tap that there, and here we go. Yeah, this is a little sharper than I might have liked. Let me look for a duller one. There, we'll try one around it. One that actually cut. I wanted to push it in, but it. All right, let's try another. Oop, missed. Yep. There. Looks good. So that should lock the nut onto the shaft. All right, next is to put together the the reverse cone. So. We'll grab those parts and do that. Take this out. Now we're going to put on the next gear, which happens to be the forward gear. Okay, forward gear next. So, we're going to go needle bearing, and gear, beautiful, and then we'll go this guy, now remember the the lip on this washer goes up towards this bearing. Okay. 
And then we tap this on. Okay, with our special tool. The trick to this is to make sure you're hitting it straight. If a bearing gets cocked, it doesn't go in. This isn't that tight on the shaft, but... There, you can feel it stop moving, so that looks good. I got this guy back together. Um, there's a little bit of play, but I think this bearing is tapped on as far as it needs to be. So, let's hope. Um, I guess otherwise, when you put it back in, the transmission won't go together because there's too much space here. I don't know. I didn't really find a measurement for how how close they're supposed to be. And there's something about shims in here, but I haven't come across any shims on any of this. So maybe there's supposed to be some kind of a shim in here. I, I, they're just not there. I don't know what to say about that. So um, the next thing is replacing these oil seals. Which I haven't done yet, so let's see if we can get the old one out. All right, let's see if we can just tap these out. <laughs> okay, that was easy. Okay, so that must be... Yep, this seal. $4.35. Yeah, $4.35. Push it back in, I guess. Just tap you in. Okay, I guess that's that's right. This is just gonna pop. This seal should just pop out. Just know what's gonna happen here. Okay, that wasn't bad. And I don't know if I really need to replace these seals, but, um, you know, seven bucks, why not? Don't want this to leak. Alright, so I guess we just press, press this in here. Almost. Getting there. go. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, new oil seals. Check. Um, now I'm gonna just take a razor, clean this, and we're gonna clean this off. Then I'm gonna take them outside, hit them with carbon choke cleaner. So let's put it together. So I cleaned the outside of this surface with some brake cleaner. And we put the output shaft back in. And then the flange cover over the transmission and we're done. I don't really get the shim thing. I didn't find any shims in this. So I'm just putting it back the way it was. So this goes in here. Well, that all looks good. Now we'll put this flange on. See if it... Okay, and just for a second here, we're going to put this nut on. Kind of hold it somewhat in place. Now we'll put a layer of Permatex. I've got the gasket compound around here. And now we put the flange back on the transmission. Just wondering if I want to put a little bit more, more gasket compound. We'll add just a little bit more. A couple little spots. All right. It's like there should be some music playing. So this goes this way. This is the oil seal for the input shaft. Alright, let's try this. Get in there. There we go. So, let's start bolting this bad way back together. Hopefully this doesn't leak. That's all I have to say. So I'm just going to go in a star pattern here. I'll go across. A little more than hand tight. This is my torque wrench. I just choked the wrench so I don't. I'm not torquing them, we're just kind of snugging them down. Squishing the glue. Okay. And we got quite a bit of glue squishing out. This is so hard to turn. I just feel like something's not right here. Why can't I turn this empty shaft? It's not right. Something's wrong. So yesterday, 
I was having some kind of problems where I would put this this belt housing back on and then my input shaft would lock up and I was a little frustrated but I kind of stepped back a second because if it's not working something is obviously wrong so let me just show you what happened and how I figured it out when I put this all back together put this in and everything seemed like it was working working well then when I put my bell housing back on every time that I got tight my input shaft would lock up so that's not good that obviously something's wrong so what I did was I ended up taking first I thought well maybe maybe this is the problem so I took these to the input shaft and the intermediate shaft I took them out and just put this shaft in and it, this shaft turned fine, no problems. I got the bell housing tight, so that's not the problem. So the next step was to put just this shaft in, the input shaft. I put just the input shaft in, and I took the intermediate shaft out. And I put the bell housing in, I tightened it up, and the input shaft turned fine, no issues. So I realized there must be something wrong with this intermediate shaft. Then I remembered it did come out at some point by mistake, and there's this, you can see it, this thrust washer in here that's kind of a square. I had this square part of it turned, and I had it up in this, this part of the bell house, or this part of the transmission, and I guess that didn't let the intermediate shaft go in far enough, and then when I put the bell housing cover on, everything bound back up. Now I think I've got it, so now it's just a matter of, of cleaning Cleaning this again, cleaning the bell housing area, and then uh, bolting it back together, and hopefully it'll work. So that little snafu was, like I said, I was getting a little nervous yesterday, but just tried a couple things, and I, I figured it out. So that if you, there's only one way to put this stuff together, and if it's not put together that one way, it ain't going to work or go back together. Hopefully this will be the last time I put this bell housing on. And everything's right here, so here we go. Again, there should be some kind of music playing as I do this. Carefully, we'll get on the pins. Looks good. Looks really good. It looks like it already, this went on easier than it did before. It just went right into position. I know if I put this much torque on this before, there's no way I'd be able to turn any of the shaft. Okay. Success! Yeah, it's very, very successful. Awesome. Flange goes on first. Flange on. Push in the oil seal. Then the O ring goes in there. Then the nut. That's right, reverse threads. Every time they get me. Alright, I'm just going to take this over to the vise and torque this on. The other thing about torquing this. I put a pin in here that locks this spline in this flange so that I can torque the nut. Okay, I got the nut. This nut is on and I cold chiseled it into this keyway. I set it to 200 pounds of torque. Nut, first thread, so that together. The next thing is the shifting mechanism. Now, I didn't do anything to the shifting mechanism. It feels fine. The only thing I did do is I, I clipped this the shift dog over so this was the forward side which is now a little scored I'm going to use that for the forward side because it's in a little bit better condition it's in neutral and it just goes on that cone so we just slide it in there now believe it or not whether this slides a little bit to the forward or after the transmission is actually a, an adjustment so I'm going to try and get this exactly in the position it was in I can tell because of the um, the discoloration in the paint where the shifter was, so I'll screw that in, and then I guess we're ready to put some oil in her, and she's done. 